Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight on Computercraft Edu, or Computercraft Edu, if you prefer. This is a really cool mod that I'm super excited to be showing to you guys today. Uh, Dan200 has been working with the Minecraft Edu guys and Minecraft Teacher to build a programming tutorial type version of computer craft. So the focus of this mod is to teach kids how to program. So if you guys aren't familiar with programming or don't know how to program, but were interested in playing with turtles, this might be the mod for you. Uh, also, if you're a teacher or if you have kids and you're interested in getting your kids interested in programming, also, this might be the mod for you. So even if you're not typically a fan of writing code and doing computer craft stuff, I highly recommend that you guys check this out because you have these nifty buttons that you can click to control your turtles. And there's even a whole programming interface that is, as you can see, built around just placing little items inside an inventory. So you don't really need to know how to code in order to handle this. So without further ado, let's jump into computer craft edu and see what it's all about. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do is make yourself a turtle. So there's a new type of turtle, which is separate from the normal turtles that you guys have played with, called the beginner's turtle. If you look in any eye, you'll see that you've got the regular turtle and the gold one from Computercraft, as well as the beginner's turtle. So this is a totally separate version uh, of the mod. And you can see that the crafting recipe is pretty straightforward. It's just some wool, redstone, and a chest. And that will get you a regular old beginner's turtle. Now, uh, when you want to give the turtle a tool, for example, a sword or an axe or a pickaxe, you just do it like so in a crafting window. And you can give them two tools at a time. And depending on which side of the turtle you place the tool determines which side of the turtle you get stuff. So you can see here and here. Cool, right? So I've gone ahead and crafted a turtle that has both a pickaxe and an axe on it. Cool. The next thing you're going to want to get yourself is one of these guys, a turtle remote control. They're pretty easy to make, and when you pick them up, you'll see a slot on the bottom right corner added to your inventory. This allows you to interact with these beginner turtles. Without one, it'll tell you you need a turtle remote. However, once you have one in your hand, you can right-click on any turtle in the world, and you have direct access to modify and work with this turtle. So there's a few th cool things you can do with the turtle. Number one, you can interact with the turtle directly. So if you want to move them up, just click the button. You can turn them around and move them forward and backwards. And if you happen to be in the way, he'll push you. <laughs> if you have a program written, you can have him step through that program or run it, but we'll get into that in a bit. You can also have him place blocks and dig if you'd like. So if you wanted to have him dig, the dig function will cause him to dig in front of him. You can also access this turtle without right-clicking on him. If you simply press the zero key on your keyboard, it will open the uh, interface of the last turtle that you've interacted with. So if you have multiple turtles in your world, whichever one you last worked with will be uh, controlled when you hit the zero key on your keyboard. And one final cool feature is this little center button, show turtle vision. This is really nice because it lets you see what the turtle sees. Awesome, hey guys. Now the second tab over here on the right is the inventory tab. This is where you can give a turtle item. So if you want to give him some dirt blocks that he can place in the world, or we'll give him a crafting table in slot two, we'll give him a chest in slot three, we'll put a hopper in slot four, we'll play with these in a little bit. But this is the inventory slot. If you've used turtles in before, you know that they get 16 inventory slots that they can use to either place items or if they happen to be digging, items will land in their inventory. The third tab is really cool. You can change his name. So I will call him, of course, Dire Turtle. Ha ha ha. Dire Turtle is my friend. Let's pick a nice color for him. Ooh, I like that blue. What else we got? Ooh, a nice cyan color here. So you can flip through all the different colors. Uh, I'm going to go with blue because that just sounds cool. And I'd like to also give them some decorations. So, ooh, 3D glasses. I mean, they're turtles, so they need to have these things, right? I mean, let's be honest. Creeper face, little hats, all kinds of neat stuff that you can do. Um, scuba mask in case the turtle wants to go swimming. I'll put the glasses on. That looks nice. So you can customize your turtle just to make it look cool, especially if you're uh, working with kids and they're playing and there's several kids in the world. They can each customize their turtles their own way so they all look the same or different and they can make it, you know, pretty neat. And then the final tab here, which we saw a brief demonstration of earlier, is the programming interface. Now, I don't want you guys to get uh, concerned about this, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these programs that I've written already because it's really easy to do. So I can't wait to show you how simple it is to write code using this nifty little program interface. 
So we're going to start off by writing a very simple program. I'm going to go ahead and have this turtle uh, move forward. So the first thing we want to do is click the new button here and we can name this program one. Okay, uh, you'll notice here that you can copy program one to disk. We'll check that out in a bit. But for now, we're just going to have this turtle do a couple things. So you have two options. You can either A, grab a piece from the right hand side, like the move forward function, and place it in the board. And you'll notice that the uh, board highlights to show you where you can place programs. So you can either have it uh, placed to the right or to the left or to the bottom of the program. So with just the simple move program button, whenever we run this program here, which we'll do with our turtle remote, we'll just say run program. And we can do it from this screen as well, but I want you guys to see it more easily. We just hit run program. Nice, it worked, right? So every time we run the program, he's gonna move forward one. Now, if we threw another move forward in there a couple more times, this will have him move forward three times. One, two, three, nice and easy. Cool, right? And then I'll move him back manually. The other thing you can do is just click on one of these open slots here and it'll give you a list of all the available functions that can be used at this time. On the right are all the functions that are supported, but over here are the ones that can be used right at this moment. So this might be a better way to go if you're just starting out and you're not sure what you can do from where you're at. So at the end of this, I'll have him move up and move back down and then move back three more times. Nice. Let's check it out. I'm going to run the program. One, two, three, up, down, and back three times. Awesome. Good job, Dire Turtle. Now the programs don't all have to be moved over to the right. You can also add commands to the second line as you wish. So what I'm going to have him do next is go ahead and place a block. Now this is going to go ahead and let you choose whether or not you want to place it in front of, above, or below. So I think uh, after he's moved a few times, let's get rid of the move back stuff. Here, you know what? Yeah, let's get rid of these. Then we'll have him place a block down, and then we will have him dig the block down, and then we'll have him move back one, two, and three times. Let's see what happens now. Up, down, place the block, dig the block. Nice. So the next thing I'll show you guys how to do is to save and share your programs with other players. Just click copy program to disk and you'll notice that you get a disk named after the program as it was in the console here. Um, so let's go ahead and practice by deleting program one. Oh no, we lost all our work. What are we going to do? Well, we can get it back by using the disk. How do we learn the knowledge that's on the disk? Obviously we eat it. Om nom nom. And now program one has been brought back to us. So you can share this disk with your friends if you're playing on a server and any programs you write, you can just save them the disk, toss it over to your friend, he eats it, and now he knows your program. Let's create a new program where we're gonna look at some more advanced stuff and we'll call this, creatively enough, program two. Uh, program two is going to teach us about some more advanced things like loops. If we want a turtle to move 10 times, I don't think you wanna move 10 forward tokens onto this board. That would get a little tedious. So let's use what's called a for loop. For loops allow you to execute a certain number of times. So I'm going to do a for loop. You'll notice that now we have red icons on the board. This is telling us that it requires more information. You can't just put the for variable here and have it start working. You need to give it more information, specifically how many times you want it to go through and do something. So we can click here and it'll tell us what has to happen. So the first thing we have to do is define a variable for the for loop. In this case, I'm just gonna let it stick with the default X or I could change it if I wanted to and use any kind of information. So I'll stick with the default of X. Now we have to do whether or not we're gonna have it equal something. For a for loop, it would be equals, but in other loops, you might have something like not equals or other variables type things. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and add a number. So in this case, we can add a specific number. We can reference an existing variable. We can have an item count that exists in the turtle's inventory. We can go ahead and use a random number, or we can put a minus sign down if we want to have it be a negative number. But for now, I'm just going to specify the number one. And then we could go ahead and say two, and we'll say 10. And then the final thing we need is do. So now we're going to say for x equals 1 to 10 do. And this will execute the following commands, all the following commands, 10 times or so. So we're going to say move forward. And then we're going to go down here and you'll say that it's telling me that there's an end required. So I'm going to go ahead and add that end as it tells me. Now we have a nice simple for loop. For x equals 1 to 10 do move forward end. And this should ask the turtle to move forward 10 times. And you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to go ahead and repeat that right now and have a for x equals 1 
to 10, do move back and nice. So now it should move forward 10 times and back 10 times. Let's see what happens. Run program. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then back again. Awesome. So that's how you use for loops. And of course, don't forget, if you'd like to see this from the turtle's point of view, you're more than welcome to. Nice. That is cool. You may not, however, know exactly how many times you want to do something. Perhaps we only want this turtle to move forward as long as there's a block beneath him. Let's go ahead and write that program now. I created already a new program 3. We're going to use the while loop. And this is going to add a couple more conditionals that we're going to need. So we have to define under what conditions this while loop will execute. That condition is we're going to go ahead and detect whether there's a block below it. And if that's um, true, so if it detects something below it, then it's going to do the following. We're just going to tell it to move forward and then end. Cool. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to tell this program to run. As long as there's a block underneath the turtle, he should be moving forward. And when there isn't a block under the pro turtle, the program will end. Nice. However, what if I only want him to move forward if the dirt below him is dirt and not sand? Well, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to get rid of the do, and I'm going to say, and we're going to inspect the block below him. And we're going to say that block has to equal a particular thing. We can either give it a string or a variable, or we can say a block name or an item name or something along those lines. We're going to say block name. And as you can see, once I clear out the space here, there's a lot of options available. And as we start typing, it will filter all those options for us. I'm going to tell it dirt is the one I want. Cool. And then do. Now when we run the program, he should only move forward if there's a block below him and that block equals dirt. Nice. Now, as you're getting into programming, you're probably going to want to debug your code a little bit to see how it works out. So a good step here is to use the step through program function. When we click this, it's going to execute one task at a time. A nice simple program will be the best way to demonstrate this. So I'm going to use the old program that I had a couple minutes ago where I moved forward a few times and see what happens. So let's go back into our remote control and step through. Once, twice, three times forward. And he should go up and down and try and place a block below him. Uh-oh, cannot place block here. Interesting. And you notice our program ended because we got stuck. So using the step through program method, we can find out where our problems are. And if you have the uh, program window open here as we step forward, you'll see which current tile you're working on. And as we step through program, you'll see each time it goes through and then where it errors out. So you can see this is the problem. And we were unable to place a block there. Cool. All right, Direwolf, we've seen some basic stuff. Show us something useful. How about a turtle that automatically chops down trees? Let's write the code and then practice it. So the goal here is we're going to have a tree and we're going to try and chop it down. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I'll probably use the type of sapling that doesn't branch out like the oak sapling. So I'll go ahead and use the birch. Those are always just straight up and down. So we're going to do this in a simple way. If you want to write one that can handle branching, I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, so we're just going to want to be able to go forward. And our goal here is to say we're going to wait until the tree grows. So our first objective is to figure out whether or not the block in front of this is a uh, birch wood block or a birch sapling block. And then if it's a birch wood block, we're going to want to continue moving upward, breaking all the blocks in front of it until there are no more birch wood blocks in front of it. But we also have to be prepared for the fact that there might be a uh, you know block in the way. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. All right, guys, so I'm going to want this program to run forever. So I'm going to say while true do. This is just going to continuously run over and over and over again. The next thing we want to do is then check if the block in front of the turtle happens to be a piece of wood. So all I'm going to do is we're going to say if inspect block, this one checks in front instead of above or below. So we're going to check the block in front of the turtle equals, and we're going to give it a block name. And we will say wood. Okay, so if the block in front of the turtle equals wood, then we're going to do the following. We're going to, at this point, need to break the piece of wood in front and move up. 
And we're going to keep doing that. Break the piece in front, move up. Break the piece in front and move up. But we're going to want to keep doing it, um, provided that the block in front is still wood. So then we're going to do a while loop here. Now those of you who are programmers might realize that this if loop isn't really necessary, or the if statement that is, um, but I'm putting it there just for ease of introduction to people who aren't familiar with programs. So the while loop is going to be, again, another conditional. We're going to inspect the block in front, and we're going to say if it's equal to wood. Then we're going to do the following. We're going to dig in front of the block, and then we're going to say if, and we're going to detect up. If there's a block above us, then dig up. And then we can go ahead and end that statement there. So if detect up, then dig up. And then we're going to want to move up. So what we've got so far is if the block in front of the turtle is a piece of wood, then start repeating the following. As long as the block in front of the turtle is still a piece of wood, we're going to dig it. We're going to check if there's something above the turtle. And if there is, then we're going to dig up, which means we're going to break the block above the turtle. Then the turtle is going to move up. Okay? So then we can go ahead and come over here and end this while loop. Cool? And then we'll add an end to the end of the if statement. And then we can add an end to the end of the while statement. Let's see if I've done a good job. I'm going to tell the program to start running. Cool. And you can see the program is showing you which aspect is currently running. So it's currently looking at that inspect block, and we're seeing that it's still not wood, so it's just continuously waiting for it to turn into wood. I've placed a sapling there. It's still not wood. So let's make this piece grow. Nice. And he stopped at the end as long as there's no longer any wood in front of him. Now you might have noticed the turtle got stuck up there. We never told him to go back down to the ground. So let's add that code right now. So once he's finished with his checking here, we're going to add a new while loop. Cool. Uh, so after we've gone through here, we'll do it inside the if statement. So um, after you're done moving up and completing getting all the wood, we'll add a new while loop. And we will say while not detect down do. So as long as there's nothing below the block, we're going to do the following. We're going to say move down. Cool. Now we're going to have to rearrange some of these ends, so let's go ahead and remove them. And then it'll give you a clear indication of which ends need to exist. So we need to end this while loop. So let's do that. So we're saying while there's not a block below it, go ahead and move down. We now have to end the if statement that we had over there. And finally we have to end this top level while loop. You do have another option, however. If you've got a long list of uh, code after the line that you want to add to, um, you're going to want to not have to rearrange everything. So a good thing you can do is just press enter on your keyboard, like so, and it'll add some spacing here for you to go into. So you can see, you know, as we're pressing enter here, it's adding lines, and um, if we hit backspace, it will go ahead and delete lines. Cool. So a nice, easy way to add and remove lines as needed. Awesome. Now, let's run the program again and see if he moves back down to the earth once he's gone ahead and finished. So I'm going to tell it to start running, place the sapling down, and force it to grow. He should immediately start breaking the blocks, and then eventually he'll start coming back down, and he'll stop. And now if we look at the turtle again, oh, looks like I accidentally died him, that's okay, we'll see that the... Um, it's back at inspect block. And it's ready to run again, which is pretty cool. So once all these leaves are gone, we can go ahead and put a sapling there and bone meal it. And he's ready to run again. Very cool. Now what I consider to be the coolest feature of CC Edu or ComputerCraft Edu is the ability to immediately convert all the code that you've written visually 
directly into code. You'll notice there's a button at the bottom here called Code Editor. So currently I'm going to stop the program. So he's no longer running. And if I click on Code Editor, everything that we've done visually is immediately converted directly into code behind the scenes. And with the Code Editor, we can see everything we've done. So, so far we've written a program that says while true, do. If the turtle inspect equals minecraft.log, so if there's a Minecraft log in front of it, then we're going to say while he inspects a Minecraft log, do. Turtle dig, if detect up, then dig up, end and then turtle.up. And keep doing that until we run out of those blocks. And then we say, while not, turtle.detect down, turtle.down. So here's all the code that we just wrote using these visual tiles. So I'm gonna write a new program. This one's gonna be responsible for taking everything that's in the turtle's inventory and placing it in the chest below him. So this program is actually gonna be pretty straightforward to write. Simply, we have to determine, number one, how many inventory slots we wanna access. I'm just gonna manage the first eight inventory slots because it's unlikely this turtle will get more than just some wood and birch wood. So really, only two is necessary, but for simplicity's sake, I'll go ahead and do all eight of the first set of inventory slots. What I'm gonna do then is need to select which inventory slot we're interacting with and then tell it to do something. So first, we're gonna to wanna to do a for loop, okay? Because we wanna access all eight slots one at a time. So we're gonna say for x is equal to one, two, eight, do. What are we gonna do once we've accessed inventory slot one? Well, that's pretty easy. We're gonna to wanna to scroll down here or we could click here and we could say we want to select slot. We wanna select inventory slot. Which slot do we wanna select? We wanna select whichever slot we're currently iterating through in our for loop. So we're gonna use the X variable. So we're gonna select slot one. So what's gonna happen is the for loop is gonna say the first time through X is one, so select slot one. And then what are we gonna do after we've selected slot one? Well, we're going to want to drop items. Where are we gonna drop them? Down. So we're gonna drop whatever item is in slot one in the inventory below it. Cool? That's all we need to do. So we can go ahead and end the loop. Nice, right? And we will call this program drop chest. That sounds like a good program call. So you can see the inventory here has a bunch of stuff. The inventory here has nothing. If I access the turtle and tell it to run its program, dun 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 dun, uh oh, no items to drop. That's okay. All of a sudden, all the items are in the inventory here. Nice. So I've just modified the code a little bit. I'm going to select the slot and then I'm gonna check the count of items in that slot, and if it's greater than zero, then go ahead and drop items down. So this time we probably shouldn't get an error when I run the program. So let's give it a shot, shall we? Run program. No error that time, nice. So I'd like to add this drop chest command set into the tree program. So what we do is we check to see if the block in front is wood, and as long as it continues being wood, we will go through and we will break the block in front of it. Then we're going to check if the block above it is existing. If there is one, dig up. Then we move up, and then we finish that once we're done with that, right? So we can go ahead and leave those guys as is. And now we have while end here. Then while not block below, move down, end. Cool. So now let's go ahead and add a function set here. As soon as we finish moving down, in other words, as soon as we get to the bottom, we want to run that drop chest program. So luckily, it's very easy. There's a function here called run program. And after it, we're gonna tell it which program to run, and you can see it lists all the ones that are available so far for you. I'm gonna run drop chest. Cool. Let's see what happens. So simply adding that program set there, run drop chest, he should go ahead and run it. And if we look at our code editor, you'll see that's what it's doing. Cool, I like it. I would like to know more. Let's go forward and see what works. So I'm going to get myself some more saplings. And I'm going to make sure that he's running his tree program. Cool. And if we check here, we'll see that he's sitting there just waiting, okay? We're gonna grow the, pro the tree here. There we go. He moves up, he breaks all the wood, he keeps checking, no more wood, so he's gonna move back down, and then he's gonna run the drop chest program. So all the wood and saplings that he collected are already added to the chest. How cool is that? 
there's a few other things you can do with these cool little beginner's turtles. Now, you're not going to be able to do everything that a computer can do. You're not going to be wrapping peripherals, and you're not going to be outputting information to monitors, and you're not going to be doing some of those complex things, but you can interact with Redstone, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and write a program that says set Redstone. Nice and easy. In front, above, or below. I'm going to go with in front, and we'll just set it to true. Nice and simple program. So that now, when I go ahead and run this guy, run program, nice, redstone true. And you can do the same with detect redstone. So if you want to detect whether or not redstone existed, there is a detect redstone function, and you can detect in front, up or down, and, you know, based on that condition, you can use that in an if statement or something like that. So if redstone then, or while redstone do. And if you'd like your turtles to talk, go ahead and let them. Uh, just go ahead and drop the say expression there, and then you can add what you want it to say. So you can either have them say a number, or a string, or a variable, true or false, all kinds of stuff that you could have them say. You could tell it all kinds of things, right? But we're going to go ahead and just have them say a string, like hello world. Nice. So that now, when I go ahead and run this program, he says hello world. Nice. And if we gave him a custom name, like dire turtle 2, and then we ran the program, Dire Turtle 2 says hello world. So obviously there's a lot of functions available here. You can do things like moving obviously, turning left and right, up and down, place or break blocks, pick up or drop items. You can attack people, you can do redstone and say, you can interact with loops, if then statements, variables, numbers, all kinds of cool stuff. I think I've shown you most of what you'd be interested in seeing uh, that's available here. There's obviously a couple things that I didn't cover, uh, but you can start downloading this mod and play with it yourself to figure out some of the things that I haven't shown you. I highly recommend if you're interested in learning a little bit about programming, even if you just have nowhere idea where to start and you'd like to learn, this is definitely the place for you. Um, grab Computercraft Edu, start playing around, write some basic programs, and uh, see where it takes you. And, you know, the best recommendation is after you've written things like this, go into the code editor and just look at what the code is and just try to understand how the code relates to the visual editor here. The visual editor will try and help you to do smart things and prevent you from making mistakes, but you probably will struggle a little bit in the beginning, but don't let that deter you. Once you've gone through a couple programs, you'll quickly get the hang of this, because this is, after all, targeted at teaching you how to write programs. So if you're interested in programming, if you just want to figure it out, or if you just want a turtle that can chop down a tree for you, you can just watch this video and insert the exact same um, programs that I just did. Pretty cool, right? So what I'm going to do is wrap up the mod spotlight here. I'm considering whether or not I might make a small tutorial series of how to do some basic and interesting things with these uh, nifty computer craft turtles, turtles here. Um, so do me a favor, leave some comments in this video and let me know if you'd like to see a little series. Nothing too crazy, but just a quick little couple series tutorial stuff saying, hey, this is how you, you know, write a turtle that can mine for you, or like we just saw with uh, the tree chopping turtle. Maybe I'll do something more advanced like it plants a sapling after it's done kind of deal. A couple cool things along those lines. Anyway, for now though, we definitely have to wrap up the spotlight. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out Computercraft Edu. It's a very cool mod, and I am extremely impressed with the capabilities that it has. I'm also very excited for the teaching capabilities because I think it'll really help to get people, especially kids, interested in at least checking out coding, writing some code, and maybe even uh, learning how to write code themselves. It's pretty cool. I'm excited about it. It's a very cool project, and Dan200 did a great job. All right, guys, Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy. Now, there's one or two more things that I haven't quite yet shown you guys, and these are specific functional blocks that are available in this mod. There are four. Turtle build allow, turtle build disallow, turtle border block, and turtle border stop block. So let's take a look. The, um, the, the um, border block is probably the easiest one to explain. Border blocks will not allow turtles to pass over them. So for example, we've got this turtle right here, ready to run the program that I wrote earlier that moves him forward 10 paces. And uh, if there wasn't a border block there, and I just told this program to run, he would have no problem executing those commands and then moving backwards. Easy peasy. However, if there was a turtle border block right there, and we told this turtle to run once more, 
ta-da, he would get stuck. And you'll notice the error cannot enter protected area. So this is a great teaching tool for uh, kids if you want to build mazes that you have to, you know, get the turtle to figure out what's up and where he's at and get around. Now, um, this will also, and we'll demonstrate this here, extend um, above and below this border block. So if I move him up a little bit, we'll move him back and we'll tell him to run his program. Again, he gets stuck because he cannot move into the protected area. However, this is where the tortor, turtle border stop item comes into play. Okay, I'll put that there. And then we'll remove these blocks. If I have the turtle move back down and back a little bit and run the program, he will get errored out that he can't enter the protected area. The uh, border allow only affects blocks above it. Whereas the turtle or the border disallow affects blocks above and below. So if we move him uh, forward, it says he can't enter the protected area. Let's move him up above this guy and then have him run his program. He should have no problem passing into that. So just a nifty little block that, you know, prevents turtles from going into an area, but then you can also allow them into an area if you want um, so that you can kind of, you know, get people to run um, programs and learn some little pathfinding type stuff. Definitely pretty cool. And the build allow and build disallow blocks work the exact same way, except they prevent uh, the turtles from interacting with their environment. So they won't be able to build or break blocks.